Now, let's talk about Raw. There was good and bad on this show. Show up with every WWE segment you've ever seen in your life. The champion comes out. He wants to know who his challenger is. Four dudes come out. They all want the belt. And then, and you know, whoever, what do they call him? The GM. I don't even know what they officially are. Sonya Deville. Comes out and announces a fatal four-way for the number one contendership coming up in the main event of the match. Or the main event of the show. AJ Styles was not at the show. I don't know where he was. I don't have an update. But he was not there, and as a result, the only match they had advertised, which was AJ and Omos versus RK Bro, didn't happen. Instead, they did Robert Roode and Dolph Ziggler versus the Street Profits and Alpha Academy in a three-way to determine who gets the championship match. And Omos just comes out near the end of the match, and he interferes. He attacks the Street Profits. Which it doesn't even, there's no, no explanation for why he did this because, like, whoever wins is getting this championship match. So, like, he shouldn't want anyone to get the championship match if he's not getting it. But he specifically chose one team. He beat them up and then uh, ended up with the uh, Rude and Ziggler pinning Dawkins. So they went on to the championship match later. We had the Queen's Crown coronation with Queen Zelina, who is now trying to do an English accent about 50% of the time. It's as goofy as it sounds. Dewdrop can take no more, who actually has an accent, and she comes down to the ring. Maybe that's, maybe that's why she was so mad. And oh. uh, she attacks Zelina. They have a match. Zelina wins in two minutes. <laughs> I thought the template for the accent was already set up through Booker T. If you're going to do an accent now, especially a fake British one, Booker T is your inspiration. Becky Lynch came out to do a promo, and she was interrupted by Bianca Belair. And uh, I don't know if you guys heard the Filthy Show yesterday, but I thought that I would be calm in my third speech about the Becky Charlotte thing. And next thing I know, I I, uh, I think I almost had a stroke. But anyway, part of the rant yesterday on the Filthy Tom Lawler Show was about how broken the system is and how, once again, Becky Lynch comes out, she's supposed to be a heel, and everybody's cheering her. And they cheer her, and she gets in the ring, and she starts doing her heel promo. And it doesn't result in booze. The crowd just dies. They don't want her to be a baby or a heel. So then Bianca comes out, and Bianca actually cut a great promo. And it led to a brawl, and I thought, oh, this is great. You know, Bianca's going to lay her out. No. Becky lays her out with a, with a kendo stick attack and uh, leaves. Because heat. we must have heat all the time. Damian Priest faced T-Bar. No, he did not beat T-Bar. Uh, T-Bar threw a chair at him for a disqualification. <laughs> and then Damian Priest got really mad. I bet you anything. This is your classic Vince likes the guy. You know, he, he speaks Spanish. He's tall. He's like everything they want. But you need a mean streak, T-bar? brother. Oh, you got to be, you got to show me some anger. So they booked something where he could get really mad and he beat the guy up. You know how stupid that is? You know how stupid that is? How did Damien Priest kind of get over, well, for the exception of Bad Bunny and everything, like Damien Priest got over because he was like throwing hands with Sheamus because he was presented as a badass. He was not some dork childlike character like most of the rest of the roster. Like he was different. He stood out. He banged around with these guys. And that, to me, is the easiest way to have this feud with T-Bar. All you got to do is have T-Bar challenge him. But look, we have a pass with each other. I don't know if they wrestled in Ring of Honor or not. I, I, I really don't. But we have a pass with each other. You know, I see you, I see me. Look at me. I'm huge. I'm jacked up. I need to kick your ass because I need to make my mark on this show. I'm tired of teaming with Mace. I left that dead weight behind. Let's go. You start it that way. And then you have an, a, a situation where a chair gets involved. It leads to another match because, like, you're you're telling me that Punishment Martinez and Donovan Dijak can't have a great match. And I know what you're saying. Well, that's not them anymore. It's Damian Priest and it's T-Bar. But the reality is, is you put those guys in with each other, you give them time, they're going to make each other look fantastic, and you may actually have a fight with, like, two guys that people might want to see, even though, yeah, T-Bar should should be the one that is a stair step for, you know, Damian Priest as he continues to ascend, because at some point he's going to be a champion on that brand. Very difficult for me to believe that, so... I don't know. To me, it's so simple to go and you do something like that as opposed to this nonsense that'll just lead to a match that, again, probably one more and that's it. 
And we did a big draft to shuffle the rosters, which resulted in a never-before-seen match with Carmella versus Liv Morgan. Carmella won in three minutes, wearing her soft fabric mask to keep her face from being injured. Keith Bearcat Lee beat Cedric Alexander in two minutes. Just a way to get Bearcat Lee over. He appears like he's going to be a heel, but I'm not, I'm not sure. He's still facing heels. But he's uh, very aggressive and supposed to be angry right now. Well, so he does me. nothing. You know, they... He does no Keith Lee stuff. He stands there and he runs dudes over and he clotheslines them and then he pins him. So the old Keith Lee is gone. Now we got the bear cat. Work like a big man, pal. Work like, like a old. bear. We're going to put like a bear old. in your entrance music. <laughs> Even It's going to go, ar. I don't know. You watch those matches from, you know, back in the day with the bear in the ring and the bear is actually doing more than Keith Lee was doing. But, uh, yeah. Uh, just leave it alone with that. But why? Actually, no. Why do they use jobbers for you know an enhancement talent with no names and no faces for somebody like Hit Row, and then you use Cedric Alexander? Who look, you need people in the tag division. He is a jobber. You just need people that are, and I know, and I know that's why. But it's such a silly thing. Well, they when... did it, Mike, because the match was over. Shelton Benjamin faced off with Bear Cat. So they're going to do another match down the road. He's going to what beat a- him up. Then they're probably going to be a, do a two-on-one match. He's going to beat up on both both of them. Which, yeah, by the well, way, if you're going to have Keith Lee beat up both of them, it probably means they're winning the tag titles soon. What a surprise matching up Keith Lee with uh, Cedric and, and Shelton because they can't think of anything else better to do. Another great wrestling tradition there. We had Austin no Theory and Dominic doing a segment backstage, which actually I thought I thought Dominic was very good in this segment, just standing up for himself and... But it led to him being beaten in three minutes by Austin Theory. Clean in the middle of the ring, and that was the end of that. We had Randy Orton and Riddle beating Robert Roode and Dolph Ziggler to retain the tag team titles. 12 minutes, uh, second best match on the show. Very good match. Good tag team action. You got two good tag teams, two great tag teams in there. And uh, nothing bad to say about this. This was great television. Then we had a bunch of recaps and that sort of thing, and that led to the four-way ladder match. Seth Rollins, Kevin Owens, Finn Balor, and Rey Mysterio. Like I said, and he talked about it on Twitter today, Kevin Owens is going to go out there until his dying breath, and he's going to kill himself. If it's a ladder match, he's going out there to die. And there were two spots, three spots in particular. One, he got backdropped onto a ladder, which was uh, balanced on the bottom rope. And so the normal give that you have, it wasn't there. He just, the ladder smashed on the mat. He got sent through a ladder bridge, which looked like he was killed. And then Ray did the ride the ladder down onto him outside. But something went wrong, and he, like, bumped early. And then Ray and the ladder fell on his head. The announcers are like, there's no way he's getting up from that. <laughs> and I didn't think there was, but he did. And finally, at the end, Seth Rollins won. Like, he won four minutes before they went off TV. So we had four minutes of posing... Interview with Seth, uh, stare down with Big E. I mean, they did the whole nine yards. So uh, they're doing this match, I presume, on television because Survivor Series is going to be the Raw champion versus the SmackDown champion. I would presume we're going to have a DQ or, or something like that. I guess it's possible that Seth could beat him for the title and they could do their Roman Reigns, Seth Rollins champion, uh, champion versus champion match. And the only reason I say that is because Seth did drop a line that the Universal Champion was afraid of him, and that's that's why he's here. And then, you know, Big E could win the title back after Survivor Series. These people can do whatever they want. But uh, anyway, he'll be getting a shot at some point. And that was a Raw show. Two very, very good matches, and uh, the rest was Raw. No one can replace Mick Foley. Nobody is Mick Foley. But if there's a spiritual successor in some ways it's kevin owens no matter what that company does kevin steen is gonna look at his fan base and look at what they're doing and go i'm gonna make him remember in this match and maybe he shouldn't with some of these bumps that he takes he certainly doesn't have to for me you've already taken more than enough buddy you could just put it into cruise control the rest of your life and i'll be satisfied probably with your performances but when it comes to actually having a reach with his fan base and kind of just being that humble guy. Uh, I mean, I, I just, the evolution of Kevin Owens and where he's gotten to it in his career. And then you look at the fans that are behind him, the ones that, you know, again, he puts his, he bears his family out there a little bit for the public to, to take in. It's just, 
again, I don't. Uh, nobody can replace Mick Foley, and I'm certainly not sure, you know, charitably and all that sort of stuff, you know, where Kevin Owens fits on that chart. But in some ways, that's kind of what he feels like. Is like, man, he's kind of like Foley, and in some ways, where you know, Kevin, you don't have to do this stuff. As much as you you might love your fans, as much as you might want to continue to to set the tone for that locker room and for the people around you and for the people that you work for, you know, it just it's amazing. You don't have to do this stuff. Hey Brian, you remember the story where Canyon called you from the locker room and asked you if somebody was Fritz past Yes. Yeah, Fritz. Canyon calls me and he goes, Alvarez he always called me Alvarez. Alvarez I, I'm having an argument right here. Fritz von Eric. Alive or dead? And I said, I hope you get your money. It is not on speakerphone. He was just on his. And I said, I hope you get your money, but uh, he's dead. And there's a pause, and then I hear, I told you he was alive! And he hung up. <laughs> if you enjoy these videos, for just $7.99 per month, you can enjoy full length editions of The Brian and Vinny Show, Wrestling Observer Live, Figure Four Daily with Tom Lawler and Lance Storm. The Mad Men Podcast, Speak Now Pro Wrestling with Denise Salcedo and more, plus hundreds of archived shows, all in beautiful HD. Don't miss out. Join us today.